So let's just start with Enrico. <laughs> Try this one. It was off. It was off. Okay, yeah. That's, okay. That's so the broader impacts of Arctic social science. Um, so the question uh, number one: Arctic social sciences, uh, as it uh, has impacted the other social sciences, uh, we came up with uh, six. Uh, firstly, uh, traditional environmental knowledge. It has um, informed social sciences by uh, because of more intact communities. Uh, they uh, were able to do more collaborative work and so provided a model for collaborative work. Um, number three, North Atlantic uh, archaeology has provided an understanding of human natural systems through time. Uh, number four, Arctic research on adaptation, environmental change, has shaped research on environmental change around the world. Number five, Arctic uh, uh, is ahead on bottom-up approaches. Um, and uh, approaches to, uh, to research and uh, through a community to community uh, exchange of uh, information and knowledge across the Arctic, uh, which has informed participatory bottom-up methods. Number six, multinational uh, collaboration. Um, and uh, there was a talk here at Brown University called Diplomacy on the Rocks, uh, which has informed uh, the social sciences. Does anybody from my group want to add anything to that? Or, no? okay. We were going to talk about some weaknesses, but then we decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> Question three, uh, B, um, how Arctic social sciences has moved, uh, uh, has impacted uh, beyond the social sciences, and how, how it can continue to do that is to continue to inform policy uh, socially relevant uh, research or, or, or the social relevance of research uh, can uh, continue to uh, push back, a baseline push back uh, of uh, data, archaeological data from uh, you know, up to a thousand years. Uh, in the behavioral sense, it can provide a behavioral model of archaeological uh, c contributions of uh, human and natural, the interaction between human and natural systems. Uh, number four, uh, we can uh, inform health and well-being uh, through the Arctic social sciences. Um, in particular, uh, there's in, um, in public health, there's the notion of uh, planetary health, which is, uh, connects uh, environmental health and human health together. Uh, and then the second part of that question is, what potential uh, does it have over the next uh, 20 or so years? We came up with two uh, basic uh, ideas. One is to, it can provide a rethinking uh, of our epistemic orientation to knowledge co-production, how to reframe questions uh, and the way we respond to global change. And number two, uh, prepare for further change. So it will enable us to uh, work on the impacts uh, of continued globalization and industrial growth if that occurs uh, and how to do this uh, strategically. Okay. The third part of that, third question. Um, Arctic conditions as a global driver, uh, we came up with two. Our first is the cultural heritage is being lost uh, through environmental change, so it, that can inform the rest of the world. And uh, number two, um, Arctic uh, has become mobilized and responding to environmental change uh, sooner than uh, other areas around the world, so it can inform strategies and, pro and processes um, in, other, in other regions of the world. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, apologies if I repeat some, some of what was just said. I think we covered some of the same ground. Um, and uh, the, the first question, in what ways have Arctic social sciences influenced social science more broadly? Uh, we kind of came to the conclusion that in some ways Arctic social science is on the forefront of new theoretical developments and methodological developments and other ways is actually uh, lagging behind or looking backwards. Um, so for example, it was noted that it, at least in, uh, in, in archaeology and anthropology, uh, many of the big theoretical paradigms were uh, originally developed uh, in an Arctic context or through an Arctic lens, but, uh, but more recently, um, uh, the Arctic social sciences has kind of been, been following uh, anthropological uh, th theoretical developments uh, elsewhere. Um, kind of in, in, in geography, which is my, my subfield, uh, I, I pointed out that uh, on the one hand, uh, sort of 
in a, in a, in a thematic sense. Uh, Arctic social science is on the cutting edge of a lot of climate change uh, research and, uh, and demographic research, but in other ways it's, it's kind of looking back towards a more uh, regional approach to geography, a, a focus on regions as opposed to a focus on, on themes or connections between places. Um, uh, what contributions can we make uh, that affect domains beyond the social sciences? Um, we, we spend a lot of time talking about, uh, about policy and, uh, and, and the, the potential for Arctic social scientists to, to contribute uh, beyond, beyond the ivory tower. Um, and uh, we, we talked about um, in order, you know, what, 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 what's actually required in order to do, if we're really serious about wanting to, to influence policy, to do policy relevant research, um, then, it, then it really biases the, the kind of work that we, that we can do and the kind of questions that we can ask. Um, and 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 the, and, uh, and the, the time frame in which in which we do them, as has been noticed, noted several times already, um, we we pointed out how uh, how recently there's been an increasing trend across natural and, and social sciences more broadly towards interdisciplinary research, towards uh, team-based research that includes both natural and social scientists, and sometimes social scientists find themselves being added to a team of largely natural scientists in order to to tackle an ostensibly tra uh, transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary project. And so there's a question about, is this tokenism or is this a, a, a real genuine uh, effort towards, uh, toward, towards interdisciplinary collaboration? And so we kind of explored that, that terrain a little bit. Um, uh, also, in terms of the kind of research we do, if we want it to be policy relevant, uh, then there's, there's a bias towards call what you like sexy research something that that's that's may, that might turn out to be the flavor of the month so if you're you know if, if you're charting a new cor research course for yourself or if you're at a, a budding new PhD you you kind of maybe maybe have to take a risk that that the research project you delve into will still be relevant when you when you publish your dissertation and when you try to go on the job market and that people people will 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 care about it as much then uh, as as they did when when you first started uh, and then uh, lastly, um, the potential for Arctic social science to play a critical role outside the Arctic. Uh, the, 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 the number of topics that we discuss can kind of be boiled down to urbanization, demography, climate change, and governance. Um, uh, those those broad areas. So we, were, we talked about how a, a lot of the, the climate change impacts that we that we observe around the world are happening in the Arctic now, and there may be uh, lessons we can learn about how the adaptation uh, uh, strategies that are being employed in the Arctic, uh, uh, how they're being done there, and are there lessons that can be learned uh, in, in applying those strategies uh, elsewhere? How will governments respond to climate change in the uh, in the development of these? In development and implementation of these adaptation strategies, it was noted um, there's there's a, on on the on the demography topic. It was noted that the Arctic is a, a really fascinating uh, place to study urbanization and in migration, out migration. Perhaps there's a lot of lessons that can be learned beyond the social sciences about what happens to uh, cities uh, to to towns when you have a net net migration. Uh, in or out uh, uh, of, of certain demographic groups, what kind of pressures uh, does that place on infrastructure, uh, both as a result of in-migration and out-migration, um, and then what governments can do about that. Uh, and, then, uh, and then governance, um, we talked about how there may be some lessons that, that we can draw, uh, that, we can, that we can conclude from, uh, from looking at the, the multi-scalar uh, uh, empowerment of uh, of indigenous uh, groups in the Arctic uh, from from the local at the scale of where de uh, devolution is taking place all the way up to the to the to the international level uh, through the uh, groups like the the Inuit Circumpolar Council. Uh, you know the Arctic is an interesting place to study how you know indigenous governance is actually being implemented at mul at multiple scales uh, and. Uh, we, we actually struggled to, to come up with another example elsewhere in the world where that same kind of multi-scalar governance is taking place um, in, in, uh, in, in the same way that it's happening in the Arctic. So perhaps there are some lessons to be, to be concluded there. So, thanks. Thank you. to repeat things other groups have mentioned so far, but there's a lot of overlap between um, what other people have said so far and what our group talked about. Uh, we wanted to note a little bit of humility in terms of talking about the influence of Arctic social sciences more broadly, just because it can be hard to tell from the inside what influence has been. 
Um, but there are, um, first of all, um, Scott just noted the historical impact of um, Arctic social sciences on the development of anthropology. And then more uh, contemporary topics, uh, things like a co-production of knowledge of climate change and social environmental systems, um, of applied community-based projects that also are producing um, pretty uh, good science. Um, and then some even more specific topics like resilience or uh, marine mammals and human-animal relationships. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I forgot about the mic. Um, and also, as others have mentioned, um, NABO as an example of international collaboration setting standards um, across a region, but also working up from local to larger scales. Um, and Anna was in our group, and she actually showed us a chart showing that most of the grants in Arctic social sciences currently are going to um, disciplines that have really traditionally applied for and received them, like archaeology and cultural anthropology, pretty heavily, whereas some other disciplines in the social sciences, like, for example, political science, um, are not applying or receiving as many grants, and that there could be a lot of room for expansion here, um, given all this talk about interdisciplinarity and the topics that are of interest uh, beyond those traditional boundaries. Um, in terms of the possible influences on the social sciences specifically, um, we agreed that possibly the biggest possible influence from the Arctic social sciences would be um, trying to bring indigenous knowledge and collaboration to other domains of research, uh, like more in the natural sciences, as well as this focus on um, empowerment of indigenous communities, um, participation in the research and politics. Um, and a couple of examples of how this has worked that could be applied elsewhere would be in fields of resource management um, and in studies of uh, social and environmental interactions, uh, like some of the ones that we heard about in our keynote speech today, for example. Um, and then in the next 20 years, um, this was a little bit difficult because there is that question of can we see that far in the future or will our predictions of what is most important now be things that are going to be updated uh, really heavily even in the next few years. But one of the things that we focused on was um, contributing to the public discourse around some of the issues that are really important right now and we see having these cascading impacts in the next few years. Um, with more information and nuance about what is actually going on, the fact that people do live in the Arctic, the fact that uh, you know ice melting isn't just a thing that is shown on big global maps, but also is something that has very specific impacts um, for specific people, and how is that something that can be dealt with on a practical level. So uh, leading into question C about the impacts beyond the social sciences, um, we think that really this public outreach kind of aspect is going to be really important in creating um, in, among the general public um, more resources and more information out there about the complexities of environmental <laughs> change and what the social impact is, and also using social science to avoid failures to communicate that, um, not just speaking in scientific language that most people are not um, maybe able to understand how the terms are being used or that catches people's interest. Um, and social science, there is uh, social scientific research specifically speaking to successful communication. Um, and a couple of examples of this impact in the Arctic have been, uh, for example, with indigenous whaling as a massive uh, political and social campaign um, against what was, you know, a very strong feeling among, you know, members of the American public in the South of, uh, you know, killing whales not being ethical. That required a lot of social scientific information and outreach to change people's minds on that and make it politically possible for indigenous whaling to um, be more broadly accepted. And also, in the kind of language that's changing in a, in a less concrete way, but that we are seeing from um, the environmental dialogue being around wilderness to something that focuses more on people's landscapes and the impact of the environment on people who are living in places like um, Alaska was one example. And that's somewhere where the social sciences, we think, can uh, help lead that national conversation. Nice point. Um, and I'll be quick too. 
Uh, we also, it's interesting, I think, um, these sets of questions, the, the different groups are all sort of coming much closer in accord. Um, uh, but w we feel, and then picking up a discussion from the previous group, was that the Arctic social science shouldn't be bounded by these strong environmental ecological parameters that we keep getting put in, you know, that, that that's uh, the, the way that uh, organizations think about us, that's the way um, we're, we're often defined, and yet we should look to be beyond, you know, to be, be bigger than that. Um, where's my thing here? Um, uh, we've been successful in critiquing uh, the notion that that all the Arctic is the same, and I think that's you know that's, I think that's a, an important aspect of the of the contribution of social science that people in the South and North the discussion of of the Arctic is sort of a, this uniform landscape, and actually as we're all aware that tremendous diversity, uh, both environmentally and and culturally, is something that needs to get recognized, has become recognized, and uh, is a contribution that we do. Um, where Arctic social science is profoundly collaborative. Um, it's it's, it's the, a strength of the Ar Arctic social science work is its interdisciplinarity, which has come out partially because of the NSF programming that we recognize that uh, Arctic science um, uh, creates an opportunity uh, for different fields to interact together. Um, and that's good. We think that's a, a, a good direction for science. Um, can we push these boundaries? Can we um, look for interconnected interconnections between um, the global south and the circumpolar Arctic? Uh, Arctic social science has the potential to ask very large questions given the geographical <coughs> um, um, area that, that's, that's being presented. So that's a, a strength of, of Arctic social science research. Um, and then also this notion, I think, that we've, we've, we bring to the table the strong connectedness between um, human environments and, and dynamics. And from the museum point of view, you know, it, we've, we've made a big um, point of the importance of preservation and, 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 and the importance of preserving biological diversity. Um, the Arctic is uh, a great example of the need and importance of maintaining um, uh, cultural diversity um, and, and, and I think directing policy towards that. Um, I see we, we, we well, I'll, I'll, just in question of time, I'll skip that. Um, We, we have the, the potential, you know, what contributions um, social scientists make. We have the potential to communicate the values um, that we recognize as significant and important from northern native communities to the public and the policy makers. And, and that social science really has the responsibility uh, and the potential to contribute to public mm -hmm. policy um, uh, pertaining to um, natural and geophysical sciences and developmental issues. Um, so that we have a strong responsibility as activists um, to help communities confront the economic development uh, that's sort of coming along with transportation, population shifts, and, and, and other issues. Um, and I think that's a, a, a strong, we, we thought that was a strong characteristic of um, Arctic social science. Uh, just to conclude, we, we had a long discussion on the future of the Arctic in light of the inevitability of some climate change in a generation or two from now, um, and the need, uh, the, the strong need for us to be preparing the infrastructure for the future. Uh, we felt that social science has a huge responsibility to provide uh, education, you know, to help uh, both, you know, society at large, northern communities, the discipline, whatever, to navigate this new um, um, emerging landscape and, and to keep social science values and perspectives in the kind of training initiatives that dominate university training. Um, our strong suit, of course, is working with Native peoples and communities. Um, and so I guess, uh, and I'll just conclude with uh, the need to engage with community experts uh, to get their perspective on educational needs 
that the communities desire, are interested in uh, developing, that they need to help confront the future development and concerns um, and the responsibility to uh, facilitate students and community leaders. And we, we just ended a, a little bit with the discussion that, uh, from the, again, from the museum paradigm that, you know, that we, we have these amazing, you know, collections that reveal and celebrate um, cultural traditions and are a very um, interesting touchstone uh, to contemporary community issues uh, and it's a way to um, connect, you know, the, the cultures in the north, it, much more so than elsewhere, I think, uh, have a very dramatic uh, evidence of cultural continuity and preservation and that that's uh, the picture that we would hope to help to carry forward. I think that's about it. Is that? I'm group six. I'm Who's group five? Yeah. Uh. Is I'm going to switch a seat for me? Do you want a microphone? Well, Kevin told me that I could push one of you out of the panel. Absolutely. Uh. <laughs> We're decolonizing. Yeah. Well, we had a very interesting session this time. Um, and I've just been thinking while I'm listening to all of you that um, in all cases, it appears that everyone agrees um, on everything that is being put on paper. Um, this was not the case in our group, which was absolutely wonderful, I have to say. We had so much fun. But we may have been less than terribly effective in answering the questions. <laughs> we did try, however. Uh, first of all, uh, we sort of stumbled over Arctic social science definition to begin with um, because uh, we feel that uh, not just in terms of climate change as a global problem but also in terms of other, um, other social science issues or other Arctic issues such as health and well-being and governance issues and indigenous uh, peoples' um, issues um, that uh, it has a, not just a local, but also a global relevance. So we stumbled on that a little bit. So uh, I think perhaps that Arctic social science def definition is something that we will be thinking about uh, tonight after dinner and dreaming of. Um, we also um, wanted to recognize that uh, archeologists, perhaps primarily, but also other social science disciplines have pushed for interdisciplinarity increasingly in research, pulling in different disciplines. Um, I think that we are probably seeing this happening more today, but of course uh, not always terribly effectively either. Um, social science has contributed to shining a light on unethical exploitation of vulnerable populations, and we particularly noted corporations and state, states. Uh, which nicely tied into a discussion we had earlier this morning, which was about uh, uh, important Arctic uh, drivers uh, being corporate and state behavior. Didn't we discuss that this mm -hmm. morning? Yeah. So that was a sort of a nice tie in there. Um, <clears throat> um, we also wanted to note that various stakeholders, including indigenous peoples and scientists as well, of course, including social scientists, and in this case, we didn't necessarily want to isolate social scientists from, from other scientists because it wouldn't necessarily be fair to say that only social scientists have contributed to this, that, and the other in the Arctic. Um, there, is, there are other groups such as indigenous peoples and also natural science scientists that have uh, contributed to a greater awareness globally of climate change and other important Arctic-related issues. And you might say that there are mul multiple different stakeholders that have contributed to greater awareness of the Arctic, uh, changing perceptions of the Arctic, and, uh, and uh, in generally reminding people that this is a place where people live, as has been mentioned earlier today. Um, in an attempt to answer B, we noted that um, uh, it was perhaps necessary for social science and science in general to move simply beyond 
uh, the concept of cli climate change because perhaps in many ways it masks uh, the actual issues that are uh, most important to people on a daily basis. Um, and it, it sort of uh, creates a monolithic entity out of the whole region rather than recognizing geographical and contextual diversity in different locations in the Arctic. And uh, in that case, we're not just thinking of Alaska, but we're also thinking of other locations in the Arctic. There are people in the room from Greenland and Finland and Iceland um, uh, that also have uh, similar concerns to, for instance, US, uh, US Arctic region. Um, but we have to recognize it. There is a certain level of diversity that, uh, that needs to be recognized. Um, so, in, of course, we all agreed that greater support was needed for social science research in general. And in particular, what we should do is try to encourage further research uh, cooperation between natural and social scientists and, and humanities. And perhaps in funding systems or in the funding agencies, um, there should be allowance or scope or flexibility for, for instance, natural scientists to follow uh, social scientists into the field and vice versa. Because as I think we've already discussed at some length today, sometimes the social scientist is just an add-on to an already existing idea and proposal. Well, this can also be the, the, ca the case the other way around. Um, I think we have seen projects where uh, a natural scientist seems to have been sort of put in there to provide certain data, but in other, other but isn't really a part of the discussion otherwise. So perhaps sort of uh, a two-way street there. Um, uh, diversity is um, in, in, in disciplines is something that we, uh, we discussed at length, uh, recognizing that there are other social science, science disciplines than archaeology and anthropology. We had a long discussion about this one. <laughs> including uh, sociologists, economists, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, a bunch of other, other groups, political scientists, international relations people, etc. Um, we also wanted to, um, wanted to point out that perhaps um, a further contribution um, to social science in general could be uh, to recognize and remember that interdisciplinarity is context-based. So, there is no one model of interdisciplinarity that we need to figure out. There is no one truth, uh, but rather that uh, on case-by-case -case basis, we need to figure out uh, how to integrate uh, different disciplines, uh, considering the research or the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, we also wondered whether perhaps, um, because Arctic uh, social science has been uh, has contributed to us to a, a, a pretty extensive extent. Can you say that? <laughs> <laughs> to a pretty large extent, somewhat has contributed somewhat to uh, to uh, interdisciplinary, but also multi-stakeholder uh, dialogue and collaboration. And I mean, you can see this both in individual projects or within the Arctic Council Forum, where I think uh, we have a we have a dialogue and a and a model, uh, which includes not just nation states, but also permanent participants. So uh, we can argue at length whether or not it is truly effective or whether participation is really effective if you don't have a, have a direct say in things or a, or a veto or a voting power. We can, we can debate that maybe tomorrow. Um, but nonetheless, there is a model and dialogue in place um, and perhaps uh, this dialogue can be can be uh, broadened further, so that should then include not just the efforts in further interdisciplinary research, but also inter intercultural collaboration. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Yes, I think that's sort of the the gist of it. What have I forgotten? Group. Okay, I do so much. <laughs> Thank you. And Amanda, you get the wrap up. Okay, the, the non social scientist in the group is speaking for the broader impacts of Arctic social science, so this should be interesting. 
Um, although speaking as not a social scientist, I will say that um, climate change is going to whack us over the heads if we if we ignore it. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, <laughs> So, okay, so uh, the influence of Arctic social science, um, uh, the sense we had around the table is that it doesn't make a large impact methodologically in the narrow disciplines, um, particularly because of the way many of us publish in uh, more polar or Arctic specific journals. But as many other people have said, it does make an impact in the synthetic, uh, geographically focused approaches that, that we use. Arctic science is typically more holistic, more mature in working with communities, more has a stronger system science perspective. Um, NSF has certainly been a part of that. Uh, in many ways, uh, we're catching up with communities who have known that this is how the world works all along, but nevertheless, we're, we're perhaps further ahead than others. Um, However, because we, we, our methodologies don't necessarily translate into our disciplines um, in all cases, the visibility of Arctic research is perhaps lower than it should be. It's not as low as it was because of the way that uh, academic search engines and, and literature can be identified now independent of the, the journal in which it's published, but it's still perhaps lower than it should be. And so a challenge for us that we discussed was to be more comparative and to demonstrate our value to the disciplines and to, to be better ambassadors of, of the methodological advances that we're making. Um, it was observed that area studies departments exist in many US universities, but typically not an, Ar the, an Arctic studies department of any any type. Um, in, in Nordic countries and in Russia, there are, there are some that are perhaps more disciplinary. But then the question is, is, is that what we really want or, or do we want to stay within our disciplines where we can have more influence? Um, so going to question B, beyond the uh, social sciences, we felt this was the larger impact and indeed that now this is, um, I think someone said, I don't know who I'm going to I think it was, you said this, the age of the Arctic. Um, and yeah, yeah. And so there's potential for, for the influence to grow. Um, um, and the, the, a big influence that, that we felt that social sciences had um, be in other domains is um, how research questions are asked with communities very often, which questions are asked. Um, ha it also has an influence, so that we're having an influence on, on uh, in other disciplines, on methods, um, but also in domains of interest. Uh, we felt it was hard to quantify or systematically document this effect, but anecdotally, anecdotally it does seem to be consistent. Uh, we also noticed that the field site is a nexus for many disciplines. Um, and uh, is an organising principle for many sy system science approaches. And the example was given of an archaeological field site where there can be work on DNA, geochemistry, ecology, climate proxies and culture all happening uh, in one place. Um, we talked quite a bit also about uh, science diplomacy that bridges geopolitical barriers and the way that Arctic science has, has um, held that role. Um, I'd actually say Antarctic science probably has too. Um, uh, in a tradition inherited from the Cold War that, um, that there are real opportunities to bridge those uh, geopolitical barriers through the diplomacy of science and that that raises questions regarding opportunities um, with, for example, China. Um, for part C, we, we struggled a little over the wording and were worried about scale and the direction of the arrows and we, we got kind of a little caught up with, with, with that. Um, we certainly felt that, you know, Arctic change is happening uh, to a greater extent and earlier, you know, we know about polar amplification and so the, 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 um, 
It's a little bit of a trope, this idea of field testing policy development in the face of global change, but it's certainly one that, that has some, some um, uh, it, it's, it's still got some legs and, and it, it does, it, it seems to be valid. Um, there is also the, the, um, the other kind of stereotype is of Inuit as, as resilient and transformational and al always having been adapting to change. But we noted that the shifting social context complicates that process of adaptation and that that narrative has been politicised but there's potential to maybe take it back and, and, and use it. Um, uh, we also noted that um, perhaps Arctic Indigenous groups have been much more influential in the international forum than Arctic social sciences, particularly in international law and policy, when you see about the influence of Arctic Indigenous groups in, um, in the UN, uh, in the Arctic Council, that they've actually been really successful and we should not take credit for that. Um, uh, however, we did say that co-production of knowledge is something that we can continue to advocate for and system science um, is also something that we uh, continue to, um, will continue to have a role in developing methodologically and we need to be clear about how much we've contributed in that area. And I think that was it. Perfect. Thank you very much.